Good morning, guys. Welcome back to another video. So this is gonna be the first time that we do this style of content on this install where it's a little more uncut and just raw. And we're gonna be talking about the coilovers today, specifically the Olins. So if you guys have seen in the past, I've typically done KW, I've ran the KW V1s, V2s, and V3s on all different cars. Um, I had the Haas kit as well. I had that on the Supra, or no, the Supra had the um, V3s and the M2 had the KW Haas kit. Both fantastic kits, so I'm pretty used to the KW coilovers. They're really easy to install, super easy to adjust on the fly. However, on this car, on the E92 M3, I decided to try something a little bit different. And so we have gone with the Olin's road and track coilovers. Really, really nice design. And across the board, these get amazing reviews. So people have a lot of good things to say about these. And I think that in general, these are probably gonna be mm, the better bet for most people in terms of comfort and being able to really adjust things to go over to track. If you are looking for a setup that's a little bit easier to adjust on the fly, I would probably stick with KW and you'll understand why in a minute here. So the I actually already went ahead and installed everything on the driver's side of the car and today I sort of wanted to lead you through what I was doing on the passenger side. I also went ahead and got the sway bar end links from Turner Motorsports. These are adjustable end links and yeah I, you know I don't know if you necessarily need them but I just wanted to be safe and sure in case we did need them we had them. The suspension that's on this car right now is absolutely terrible. It's uh, Bilstein shocks that are completely blown. In fact the worst that I've ever seen and they have a and our springs. Um, when I took everything off, <laughs> it was uh, it was quite funny because of how terrible these actually were. Let me show you guys what we have. So <laughs> this is the setup right now. These are just they've seen better days, but you shouldn't be able to do this with your shock. You shouldn't be able to press it in like that. And look at how long it takes to go back. Yeah, not good. So these were like riding on cinder blocks. <laughs> you literally felt everything in the car and a couple of instances where it actually shook things loose in my engine bay and suspension, not good. Um, this car has been an interesting journey so far. It's one of those things where when I do one thing and I peel back the layers, I start finding more things that just need to be addressed. But that's okay, it is a project car and that's kind of what I, I enjoy doing. So that's why I buy these cars like this. We're not gonna be able to do all of it today and that'll make a little more sense here in a minute, but basically um, Turner Motorsports also supplied their race camber plates, which I will be installing. These will work with this coilover setup. However, I haven't, I, ha I don't have the correct perches. So these perches are for a 2.5, two and a half inch race spring, which would be more along the lines of something like the rear spring that's in here, which is a lot smaller. However, the road and track setup from Olin's, directly from Olin's comes with a OEM size uh, spring and so the perch you need to use is, has to be an OEM size perch. You know my choices were to either go ahead and order OEM top hats and just run it like that because these are made for like an OEM car setup but uh, I decided to find a perch that would work. Turner actually had one. We overnighted it and it's gonna be in a separate video, but they sent out an OEM perch for this camber plate, caster, cam, camber and caster plate, that will work with the Olin's road and track setup. So I definitely want full camber and caster adjustability up top. I think that that's just always the way to go with the car. However, you know, of course you can run the OEM and that would be fine too. The other thing that we wanted to talk about in this video was with this, uh, this strange setup that the person had before me, these have basically non-adjustable camber plates on it already by K-Mac, but they're, they're pretty bent up and beat up. So for now, since I didn't have the purchase, I wanted to one, get everything installed and get the car sort of back on the road. I went ahead and just cleaned up the K-Mac camber plates and then just re-greased the bearing inside to just make it as good as possible. Granted, these are only gonna be on for a short time and we'll just be pulling all this back apart because we are gonna be doing a break upgrade soon as well, so it all has to come apart again anyways. The interesting thing about the Olin's road and track coilover setup, and this is where it differs from a lot of the other coilover setups, is that you know when you have your front shock and uh, strut assembly and you have your spring on here, like this. Basically, the way that Olin's does this is 
you set your preload for the top portion. Now, typically with a lot of coilover kits, the bottom isn't adjustable, but the top is. And so you would want to adjust all of your height in the top portion. However, with the Olin's Roden track, you're actually utilizing the bottom portion of the shock that has a sleeve that you can twist up and down. And Olin's will give you measurements based on what they think you should do, their recommendations. However, we're sort of using a combination of what they recommend and what I've found online to make the car a little bit lower. If you're looking to just like slam your car, this probably isn't gonna be the best coilover setup for you. These by nature sit a little bit higher than most coilover setups. However, you can have custom assembly assembled kits by other companies that have different types of springs. So if you find that you order these and you're just not in love with the way that it sits or sets up, um, you can order different types of springs for the top portion, just like any other coilover kit. You know, people get like Swift Springs or H&R, Eibach, whatever. And we can adapt those to this shock and this setup. However, I think we're gonna be good. I'm not looking to be, you know, super slammed on the ground, just not interested in that. I just want the car to ride good and look good too, so that's the goal. But the nice thing is with this independent setup here where you have two adjustabilities is your top spring will always be under preload and then you can adjust your height by the bottom. If you have noticed any other coilovers, like the previous coilover setup that I had on my E90 M3, was it just a very cheap coilover setup and what would happen is in order to get the car to the height that I wanted, I really had to let all of this adjustability up top out and drop down and when you would go over bumps, the spring, would sort of jump around in there. So with this having an independent setup where most of your height is being adjusted down here, you can really just keep this preloaded at all times so you don't have to worry about it making a bunch of noise and just being clunky. So this is the rear shock. Um, you'll see that it has all of this sleeving. However, I didn't adjust the rear. I left it to their recommendations, Olin's recommendations, and they kind of just have it locked in here, but you can undo this and you know move it up and down if you want to. You do have some adjustments stability here. It is an independent setup, meaning that that might not be the correct word, but it is an independent setup, meaning that you have a rear spring and then you have the rear shock, which is completely independent. There's a lot of information online in general about this setup. Um, people who are running them a little bit differently, people who are just absolutely slamming their cars on, or trying to slam their cars on them. So we'll, we'll see where we end up. I'm sure I'm gonna have to adjust things down the road. I believe these are right around the same price as the KW V3s. So yeah, you're getting a lot for your money. There are some things, you know, being that we are going to be upgrading the brakes now, not to like spoil everything for you guys, but most of you guys already know, I am doing the F8X brake conversion. So I had to buy the F8X uh, spindles, I have the wheel hubs, and then I have the ABS sensors that I'm gonna be splicing from the E9X to the F8X, um, and then I have the F8X calipers and rotors. So we have everything to do the conversion. There are a couple of other little things that I have in there, but I'll show you guys when we get to that video. Being that we are going to be upgrading all of the brakes in this car, and the car is just has a terrible alignment right now, everything is going to change. I also think that I might be upgrading the thrust arms. We'll see, I'm not quite sure yet. Um, maybe even lower control arms, we'll see. I don't know how much adjustability like I actually need for a street slash maybe we'll see the track sometimes car, you know? Yeah, it's not a full track car and I don't wanna make it that, I don't want it to be uncomfortable to drive. So you can definitely go too far when you upgrade some of these things and you make them, you know, everything adjustable when you just really don't need it. Um, some of it I'll just refresh and just get all OEM stuff brand new with new bushings, but some of it we, we will upgrade. So right now we're just gonna do the end links and the Olins, and then we will, in a future video, we'll do all the camber stuff. And then um, finally, when I'm happy with everything, we'll go ahead and get an alignment and then we can enjoy the car. And I'm really, really looking forward to that. Uh, there are gonna be some torque specs that I'll throw in while we're doing this, you guys. So don't come after me <laughs> or you didn't do it right. You know, some of these things also, when you are torquing certain parts of the car or suspension, the car has to be under load. So it actually has to be on the ground. A good way to do that if you are like at home and in your own personal garage is just get like a separate set of wheels or something and let the car drop onto the wheels and then crawl underneath and tighten down and torque whatever you need to torque. I think uh, just looking at the products in general, like it all looks beautiful, really, really nice stuff, which is, you know, sort of to be expected with Olin's. These do have adjustability in terms of rebound and compression and all of that up here. Um, they do in the manual tell you how many clicks will give you what. 
and then of course they give you all of the measuring. So they also give you a layout of how to actually assemble everything um, when you buy it, like, you know, which washers go where, which bushings go where. The only thing that's a little bit different is, you know, being that my setup was sort of aftermarket, I just sort of had to use what I had. It's not wrong by any means, but you know, I don't, I don't have all of the OEM stuff being that, you know, this is obviously a, an aftermarket suspension. So we made it work, um, but it, it, it's, it's going to be fine. The rear is a little bit interesting. You don't use any of the rubber mounts that the OEM spring uses in the back. They actually give you a little plastic spacer piece that goes on the bottom and then your adjustability is up top and then you have this little rubber gasket. Seems weird, seems like it would make noise if it does that, we'll find out. Um, but I'm, this is what they tell you to do and it sounds like most people have ran it like that and they haven't had issues. Um, again, with the adjustability on the fly, once this is in there and it's compressed down, you're gonna have a really hard time adjusting any of this. So you'll have to remove everything every time you want to adjust. Um, it's definitely one of those things things where try and get as much information as possible and find the measurements that will work with your car and your kit based off of your wheels and tire selection. I'm just completely guessing uh, because I don't know anyone else who has these coilovers that made content or talked about their settings with 18 inch wheels and 35 profile tires. So complete guess. Um, also, you know, my perch design is different being that these are K-Mac camber plates and the height is different and all of that. So we're just kind of guessing. So I am willing to bet that once I get everything on, it's not gonna sit where I want it to sit, but that is okay. All right, let's get into the install. Man, someday I'm gonna have a lift. It's gonna be a beautiful thing. What I like to do first is disconnect the sway bar end links on both sides. You might as well, because you're going to be working on both anyways. So just go ahead and hit those first. Um, I've already taken this one off, but you know, you'll see it behind the uh, shock here. And I have the H&R sway bar. Mine isn't adjustable though. This is a just a static beefed up one. So we don't need to worry about that. That'll be the first thing that you want to do. Secondly, there is a bolt at the top here of the knuckle. And this bolt is what actually holds in the shock itself into the spindle or the knuckle. And if you guys are doing this for the first time in a car that has never been swapped out, it's likely that you are going to be fighting this knuckle and shock clamp. Um, it's gonna be like a very tight tolerance and it's probably gonna be pretty difficult to get out. So mine wasn't, um, it was pretty easy to get out, but we're gonna go ahead and take this bolt out first. Reason being is a lot of your lines back here, like brake and ABS and all of that, are actually connected to a little bracket that goes through that bolt. So the bolt side is a 16. You wanna make sure that you pop out your little brake pad sensor so that doesn't rip off. Um, also on the driver's side, you'll have a headlight leveling sensor. Make sure you remove that as well. On the passenger side, you don't have to worry about it because you don't have one. I think this is torqued at 33 foot pounds of torque. Love this little light that I got. This thing's awesome. Slowly upgrading all my, all my Amazon tools to actual quality tools. Start to realize why you pay for quality stuff. In the long run, it makes sense. Even when it comes down to just a light. Sweet. Okay, yeah, that works. So 16 and 16 on this. Oh, okay. All right, we're gonna leave it. It's starting to drop the whole thing. So like I said before, if you guys have like factory suspension or your knuckle is just like super tight, you probably won't have to worry about that dropping down right away. But mine is just such a loose fitment. The moment that I pull that pass through, bolt out, the whole thing will just drop down. All right, cool. So we got a little bit of pressure on it. There it is. 
16 and a 16, like I said. Um, once, so once you get that bolt out, you can see it removes the entire bracket for your brake line and your ABS sensor line. And you can just move that out of the way and that allows you to have a lot of room when you pull out the shock. Now we can go up top here and start removing the top nuts. And when you go to torque these top nuts back down, it's gonna be 25 foot pounds of torque. So we're gonna loosen these, but we are not going to remove them completely. We're just gonna crack them. Be careful if you have OEM lines, OEM brake lines and everything. You don't want to stress those too hard and pull on them too hard. Um, thankfully these braided lines are a little bit longer and a lot stronger. Um, you'll see right away when I drop this down, my knuckle is large enough. It's just got enough room in there. And I think it's just been taken on and off with different struts and shocks and whatnot so many times that it's probably just been, she belongs to the streets is what I'm saying. I'm just gonna have this here because once we pull it out, we're gonna jack it back up so it's not just hanging. But let's go ahead and shake it. I think that's about as far as I'm gonna get it. Yeah, so now we'll go ahead and pull out the screws up top all the way and we'll drop the whole thing down. I like to try and get it as far as possible with a little bit of leverage up top. That's why I keep those bolts in so I can pull down, but it's almost all the way out. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it out up top and that should allow me to drop everything completely. When you pull this out, depending on your suspension, you could have a suspension that is just beat like mine, and you're gonna have all of the room in the world to remove it and not hit your fender. Or you're gonna have a super compressed spring that is gonna be a little bit taller and it's gonna be a nightmare to pull out. It'll be very close. Either way, it'll be very close to the fender. So just as a precautionary measure, tape up the side so you don't nick your paint when you're pulling it out. Again, so I'm removing these top strut nuts, these 13s all the way. Drop all the way right away. You can see yellow just falling on the ground from the Bilstein shock. All right, all three out. All right, so be ready, because it's gonna all come down. And this thing likes to fold in a really odd direction once it all comes out, so just be prepared for it. Right, I'm gonna put that to the side. All right, woo, boy, that clearance. <laughs> There's actually a socket they make. I ordered one, but it didn't come in time. It separates the knuckle, so you have more room. There we go, encouragement. All right, woo, get it out. So let's bring this back up. I don't want that hanging like that. Let's try and get this supported. All right, cool with that. All right guys, so the front shock spring assembly is off. This is what we have. Pretty beat up. The bushings on the end links are toast. <laughs> Doesn't look good. So this is not compressed all the way, this spring. It has flexibility in here and that is why I'm gonna be able to pop off this top nut and remove it. Obviously, if yours has a lot of tension, you're gonna need to get a, a spring compressor. So this doesn't just, the top hat doesn't just shoot off and kill someone. There it goes. This whole assembly will come off. Like that. All right, so this is what it's. <laughs> We're temporarily working with, this is that K-Mac. It's, it's like a static camber plate. Basically you just turn the orientation of it and it will create different levels of camber. You can see it's like bent in certain ways to have like different camber on different sides. It's just, just stupid, man. Probably not very safe. I mean, I don't know, maybe it is, but that's the little top hat piece. It's got these two little spacers. One's plastic, one's metal. It has the top. So inside of here, right there, you can see that moves. There's a ball bearing in here. This one doesn't even move. It's completely seized. So this should be moving freely, this right here. Um, so what I did on the other side, because the other side was the same way, basically I cleaned all three of these. And again, you guys, this is just temporary. Like I'm not keeping this. This is a garbage setup. I would never keep this on the car, but we will, uh, Clean these up. I'm gonna clean these up as best as possible. And um, I'm gonna apply grease inside of here 
and just start moving that around and try and get it to accept some of the grease inside of the actual bearing. I mean, this one is freaking seized. I don't know if I'll be able to do anything with this one. Wow. Uh, this suspension makes all kinds of scary noises. My girlfriend and I went out for a drive the other night because she hadn't been in the E92 yet. And she loves it, by the way. I knew she would, but um, she hadn't been in the car yet. And we went out for a drive and it was making some funky noises, man. Okay, there you go. So I just cracked it loose. Did you, I don't know if you guys saw that. <laughs> this thing is just... Oh, now it's moving. That was completely seized. It wouldn't even move. So that's supposed to be moving like that. So what we're gonna do is just clean this up. It's gonna be a temporary thing, you guys. A lot of this older stuff we're not reusing. So this, all of this, this old shock, the old spring. Uh, there's nothing wrong with H&R springs. They're actually pretty decent springs, but they're just paired with this shock that has just been absolutely demolished. Freaking disgusting, dude. It's crazy. And so to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about, take the little grease and you're just trying to get it into this ball bearing. So we're going to start up top. Just like, dude, you're good luck getting it in there. You know? Just working it around the edges of everything. I mean, the proper way to do this would be to take the whole thing apart, but if this was like permanent, which Jesus, I would never keep this in the car. I think it's trash. If this is permanent, I would pull this whole thing apart. So I just kind of lined it. <laughs> There's a bunch of rust in there, so it's gonna be really difficult to even try and get through that. And then kind of like lining the inside of here too. Already started to move better now that we have grease going in there. Oh yeah, dude. She's starting to free up. It does get stuck in certain positions though. I think that there's just so much corrosion and rust in here. All right guys, so I have the uh, top hat over here, the K-Mac little ball bearing as greased up as I think it needs to be for right now. Um, but we're gonna work on now, we're gonna work on assembling the front shock spring assembly. This is pretty straightforward being that they give you an entire manual. And if you look in here, they give you measurements based on millimeters as to what they recommend and what they think that you should be setting this up as. You wanna keep the spring obviously under load. So when the spring is actually on with everything and compressed, uh, 194 millimeters from the collar down here to the top up there underneath the perch. Where I changed mine is on the lower part, the lower sleeve over here. Uh, basically just went, they say 158 millimeters. I went to 140 and that should be the distance from the top of this lower collar to the bottom of the top collar for the actual spring. Uh, how I ended up with that number, I basically watched a couple of other people install theirs and um, saw the way that their car sat and just ended up on that number. Likelihood of me changing it is extremely high. I don't, I don't think that this is going to be perfect right off the first jump. In, in terms of orientation, a lot of people talk about putting on the wrong shock on the wrong side. So these are specific. These are side specific. Um, this will be the passenger side one, and then you're going to have your end link that is going to go through here like that. Let's show you guys. It's going to go through here like that on there, and then you can adjust it. I'm not going to completely tighten or torque any of this down on the end link. I'm going to do that while it's on the car, and uh, the bottom portion should technically be torqued down under load, but we won't be really worrying about that today because everything's going to be changed in the alignment. Okay, so let's first get into the measuring, and the first thing that we have to do actually is put the spring on. So I'm literally going to throw my spring on here. And then I'm going to take my top hat. God, this thing is just such garbage. <laughs> Can't wait to get this off. I'll take my top hat assembly. It's gonna go on like this. And then I'll take the camber plate portion and that's gonna go on top, just like that. Sit in there just like so. So now we're gonna take our new, well, we have a washer and one washer. It's gonna go onto the top. Right there. And then you're gonna have your new nut. When it comes to tightening these down, technically you should have a pass through socket that allows you to hold the Allen on the top here down um, so it doesn't spin 
while you do this. I have learned that, you know, with a impact, you can, you can smoke it through fast enough that it's not going to spin this. Might a little bit, not a big deal. Technically, you should have a pass through with an Allen wrench holding it still so you can tighten it all the way down. I ordered one as well, but it is not here yet. Um, being that this isn't the final installation of this, uh, we're really just kind of testing things out and seeing how it's gonna sit. We're going to just go ahead and smoke it. So now what we're gonna do is look at our measurements here. We're gonna be going 194 from the bottom of the spring to the top of the spring. That is the amount of preload that they want. This is where people sort of change stuff. Um, they change the preload, they, you know, which technically isn't the right way to do it, but. So right now it's got about 203 millimeters of preload. So we're gonna have to tighten this up. So I think in the future I might try out different springs for this. Um, people say that it makes a pretty dramatic difference if you're looking for like a different ride out of the car, a different quality. Um, you can do that and it might improve things depending on what you're looking for. Let's see where we're at now. So we want 194 on that. We're actually at like exactly 194. So I think we're gonna leave it. And then you have your bottom portion right here. This is the locking portion of it. There we go. And then for this down here, like I said before, you're gonna be measuring from the distance of the top of this little collar right here, this spanner piece, to the bottom of this locking spanner. And they have it at 158, but I've decided to make mine 140, which will lower it a little bit more. I saw some other people doing like 120, 130, so I felt like 140 is probably a nice conservative number. So we're at 155 right now, so I'll go up. And you have to be cautious of this because this piece, this spanner piece down here on the lower end of the shock spins very freely. When you're installing it, be sure not to move this around. Um, basically the way it works is that pass through nut and bolt will clamp it down and hold it into place. So we are exactly at 140 millimeters and that'll be our setup. You also have your rebound adjustment right here. So we're gonna go all the way to the end where it doesn't click anymore and we're gonna go with eight clicks. So if you look on this sheet, they have different clicks for different styles of driving. Your rebound can be adjusted based on what you're into. So um, zero to seven is track, winding road is five to 10, street is 10 to 20. I figured eight will put me right at the rivet of winding road and almost street. So it should be a pretty conservative setup. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So obviously this can be adjusted on the fly, which is nice. Let's take our end link and we're going to assemble it onto here. On the end link, you're gonna have this nut and then you're gonna have this half oval shaped washer, but we are supplied with another half oval shaped washer. It's gonna go on top like that. And then this is gonna pass through the shock and then you're gonna nut it. The nut for this is going to go on the open side. So basically once you have your washers in place, it's gonna pass through like that. We'll go ahead and throw the nut on. I'm not torquing any of this down until it's on the car. All of these will be adjusted on the car. So let's make sure that nothing moved while we were playing around. Nope, I'm good. Okay, so time to put everything on the car. Hello, this, this is John from the future. <laughs> you guys, there's, <laughs> pause. Over this, like that. Pretend for the rest of the video that the front had the dust shield on it. Not fun, so I basically did this job twice. <laughs> um, you wanna put this into the knuckle and then put everything into the top portion of it. You may need to drop this down more. Get more room. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and thread in these nuts up top. So I'm gonna put the little bracket on with all of the wires and stuff. Let's go ahead and throw in the hardware. 
We've got the pass through bolt on this side. You just wanna make sure that before you get to this part, make sure that your collar on the lower portion of the shock is flush with the knuckle. So this is 33 foot pounds of torque. So many tools I need to upgrade. <laughs> Torque wrench being one of them, impact being one of them. There we go. Move around a little bit. That's through nuts can be 25 foot pounds. Being that I already did the Driver's side, I'm gonna go ahead and connect the sway bar end links. And basically what I'm doing right now for length on them, because they are adjustable, is I'm just going off of OEM. I'm just keeping them the same as OEM. And then when we go to alignment, and we wanna change things, then we can start messing with that. Like I said before, I think down the road, I am gonna be buying some adjustable arms down here, a couple of different ones, maybe thrust, maybe control. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, um, we are, we're good. Everything is tight. Move our tape here. And yeah, we're set up good. This looks really nice, really nice. Very happy about this. Very curious to see how low this car sits. That's gonna be interesting. So that is the entire front Assembly, again, there's gonna be some things that you're gonna to need to torque down the end links. That should technically all be done under load. Um, the way to do it properly would be have it up on like an alignment rack and do it, which is where mine will properly get torqued down. But for now, this is fine. All of this is gonna be coming right back off in probably a week or something. So that is good for the front. Measured everything, it, it's equal, lines up, it's good. I'm happy with it. Well, <laughs> happy with it up in the air. Who knows what it looks like when it's gonna be back on the ground. But we are gonna go ahead and work on the rear now. The front should be more complicated than the rear. The rear should not be as difficult. <laughs> everything off here. So you're gonna have back here, obviously the part that covers up the battery. You're gonna have a plastic piece that goes along here. You're gonna pop that off. It's basically just a bunch of little plastic clips, plastic clip popper, whatever you wanna call it. And then you have a T, it's a T40, T40 right over there. It's like a little net hook like that. And get this so nice. You then have a little rubber cover right here. Pop that off. You're gonna have one pass-through bolt that's threaded and then one that has a bolt in the nut. And uh, the closer one to the hub is gonna be the 21 mil. And then the further one is the 18 that is just the bolt. So it's not a nut. And you're more than likely going to need a breaker bar to crack these loose. They have quite a bit of torque on them. I think this one is like 70 foot pounds, something like that. And the other one is 122. So that thing is like on there, on there. Okay, this is the hard one because you're at the one you have a weird angle. I'm just gonna loosen this up. It's nice and free.
All right, so before I pull everything out of the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up this top nut. The way to do this is to grab a five millimeter Allen socket, and you can actually put that inside of the strut itself. And while holding that, you can loosen the actual nut that secures the top of the strut or shock. That is a 14 millimeter. So you're gonna hold the five millimeter Allen and loosen it up with the 14 millimeter wrench. And then I'll go ahead and hop back down to the bottom and remove that last trailing arm bolt. And now you should be able to push the trailing arm down just a little bit and that will give you enough room to pull out the actual shock assembly itself. Make sure you also remove all of the spacers and the dust boot and everything else that comes along with it. You want to remove the metal spacer from the previous bump stop because we are going to be reusing that on this new setup. So the three pieces that you're going to be reusing on the new setup is the metal cup and then above that is going to be a little orange rubber spacer. And then above that is going to be a black, smaller rubber boot. The original bump stop we will not be reusing because the new setup has one. Next, you're just gonna wanna apply downward pressure to the entire assembly so you can get enough room to remove the spring. And if you push it down far enough, you should be able to pull it all out. Now on the spring, you're gonna see this black cup at the top. Sometimes those get stuck onto the bottom of the car. If it does, just hit it off with a hammer, but you are gonna be removing all of that. So we're gonna go ahead and put the shock in first. Oop. Everything is measured and good. And I'm gonna show you guys the assembly order on this. You have everything that's under the dust boot that came on the shock from Olin's. So you're literally just throwing the dust boot on. There's like a washer and a couple of little plastic washers. Then you have this metal washer. It's gonna go over the top like this. Then you're gonna have a rubber washer you're gonna have a spacer that goes through it and this top little rubber piece. All three of those are gonna go in like that. On the bottom here, remember you have these two little washers that go in like that and like that. So when you're installing it, you sort of have to hold these or they will fall out. So Owen's logo facing us. And then I'll basically push down on the arm until it slides up in the area, there we go, that's good. So the spring, already measured. You're gonna have this plastic piece on the bottom. You're gonna have this little rubber washer piece up top and you gotta hold both when you throw it in. And throw that in its little area. Since we have that situated, we can go ahead and throw in the bolt that holds in the shock. We're gonna go ahead and put that in. So we're just fastening the shock to the arm. There we go. So we're not gonna torque it, torque it. It has to be under load. Well, it should be under load when you actually torque it down, at least the one for the shock, I believe. But then we'll take the other pass-through bolt. There we go. So we have everything underneath the car, good to go, tightened up, um, put a little bit of load on the suspension with a jack. And now we're gonna go ahead and finish up on the inside at the top of the shock. We have the rubber washer that will go in. And then you have this metal washer that goes on top. That should be from your original suspension. And then you have the new nut that will go on. So five mil Allen again for the top. So you wanna hold the shock with the five mil and then use your 14 mil to crank it down. But I did read that you want to torque this top piece under, under load. But yeah, so the rest of this I'll finish off camera, but then you're just gonna take your uh, adjuster screw and it's gonna screw right on and it's a 14 mil, you're gonna lock that in and then just set your adjustment to wherever you want it. I think I did 10 clicks, so I backed it all the way and then I did 10 all the way in, I think. I think I did 10, I'll have to confirm that later. And then it's just a matter of throwing all this stuff back together and throwing your wheels on. <laughs> yeah. All right. Car is back together and we are going to, uh, we're going to drop her down and See how she looks. I can pretty much guarantee the fitment, the height is gonna be nowhere near where I want it, but that's okay. 
Um, we got a lot of adjustments to make and that will be that. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this thing down to the ground and you'll be able to see it for the first time with me. Oh, I think I'm gonna take these side skirt extensions off. It's like kind of a pain in the butt to work around. They're okay, I don't know, man. I'm kind of getting over all this carbon crap. <laughs> God, I sound like I'm getting old. Let's see. Oh, wow. Actually, hold, hold on. It's freaking perfect. No way. I mean, the back is, the back might be a little bit low. I don't know, I mean, it doesn't look bad. Does look a little bit low to me though. The front, I kind of love the front. The front is a little bit higher than it was before. We also got to think like these are gonna settle in a little bit, you know. So it's kind of hard to tell like where it's gonna be. The camber is just ridiculous. This thing's probably running like negative three degree camber up front. Like a little bit of camber is good. I want to run like negative two, I think. Negative two degree. This has got to be like negative three and a half. It almost looks like you're rolling around with like a broken control arm or something. <laughs> but dude, I am actually quite surprised at this. There's no way it's even. There's no way. I think the back is lower than the front, which isn't that big of a deal. I mean, I can go through and adjust everything as I need. Let's see. 20. 2.75, so 22 and three quarters from the bottom of the rim to the fender. This is 22 and a half. In the back, this side, 22 and a half, so that's even, that's good. And 22 and a half over here. So 22 and a half over here, so I think we're, we're a little bit high on this side if we wanted it all to be even. But you know, it, to adjust it, it's not too bad. You just have to take out those two bolts, slide down the bottom knuckle, and then just twist it, throw it back up. You know, you don't have to take off the top and everything. You don't have to worry about that. Really curious to see how this thing rides. Definitely loving the front more, man. It was, it was so slammed before up front, and it was just kind of like undrivable. It looks good. It looks really good. I'm really happy with this. Yeah, so 22 and a half all the way around is what we're gonna go with. So I'll just have to fix this side about a quarter of an inch. So let me torque down the wheels and um, I think we're just gonna go for a drive in the next video. I don't think we're gonna do in this video. This video is already way too long. So if you guys wanna tune in to the next um, video, we're gonna do some different style videos. We're gonna do some POV. We're gonna do some ride along. The alignment is really bad right now. So it's not gonna be like the most amazing thing in the world, but it will hopefully ride a lot better. I mean, this car drove so poorly. But in terms of the install, not too bad. Don't forget the dust boot and just remember to take off those front or the rear cups that are underneath the body of the car. But other than that, I mean, it's really not too bad. Man, it looks really good though. It looks really good. Nice to see the back is a little more even now. The back was uh, a lot higher before. It just had this crazy looking rake and it looks very, very odd. Yeah, I might bring down the front a little bit. It's like dead even right now. I wouldn't mind like maybe just a little bit of rake, just a little bit up front. <laughs>
about how it feels just from the garage to here it feels absolutely <laughs> night and day over what i had before as you can probably expect yeah the next video is going to be the camber plate install so we can actually get like a proper drive in this thing and get it dialed but the installation really wasn't too bad i think it looks freaking phenomenal man i don't know how we nailed this drop but i got extremely lucky i just basically guessed and i think it looks very good i think it's very even all the way around yeah, so overall, my first impressions are really good. You know, the, the car feels very comfortable just from the couple of miles that I've driven it so far, but we're really going to be able to uh, see how this performs in the future here. And I plan on giving you guys definitely some good videos. I think we're going to do some mountain driving, some mountain runs, because we are near the, the mountains here in Charlotte, North Carolina. So we're going to hit the mountains and actually put the suspension to the test. That's something that we've never really done on this channel with some of the other cars. So I want to give this thing the full beans, the full Monty, and really, uh, really dial her in too. So once we get the alignment and the camber plates in, I think that this car is going to be an absolute monster. But in terms of the installation, super, super simple. I mean, if you have basic tools and jacks and all that, you can, you can get this done at home. Um, you know, it's just a matter of doing your research and making sure that you are torquing things properly and of course assembling things properly. But Owens does a really good job of giving you ma the majority of the information that you need. So it's, uh, they do the hard work for you to be honest. And then it's just really a matter of you disassembling and reassembling. So can't wait to get the camber plates on. I believe my OEM purchase come today. So I'm gonna start, that's gonna be a separate video. I'm just gonna show you guys the installation of those camber plates and how to do it pretty easy. Um, I think that the majority of people that will be buying those camber plates will already have a suspension on their car. So. I think that'll be a uh, decent little install guide for you guys. Also, you guys, let me know down below how you enjoyed the style of this video. Obviously, it's a lot longer, a lot more time goes into it, but I'm kind of just, I'm just trying some new techniques out to sort of change things up a little bit. And um, this is more of a, just a raw uncut video where I talk about everything as we go through the process. Uh, big shout out to the guys over at Keys Motorsports, of course, for always being a fantastic partner and supporting this channel from day one. I uh, could not have done anything that I do to this day without them. So they supplied the coilovers from Olin's Road and Track, and I will have all of that stuff linked down below, as well as the Turner Motorsports stuff. But yeah, you guys see it here. I don't know, you tell me. Obviously, you know, looks is one thing, performance is another thing, but um, we will get into the performance side and, and actually give you some driving, some ride-alongs here in the future. But um, that is gonna wrap up today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys so much for this port. See you in the next one. Peace out. That thing looks sick.